Hey there, Fiber Friends. I'm Sarah. This is my Yarn Lab, and today I want to embark on a new sort of series of videos with you. I know there's been a lot of that lately on my channel, but I'm so full of ideas and motivation to get languishing projects finished up, and I've got a number of them that fall into this category, and that is sweater rescue. So if you're like me, you've probably at some point cast on, knit a sweater, tried it on, and hated it. And that is the story of my Soldotna. This is a very popular Caitlin Hunter, um, that's Boyland Knitworks pattern. Uh, it's a colorwork cropped tee. I knit mine using my periodic table of yarns, DK weight yarn. Um, in a variety of colors. Here's a skein of that neon. Um, and I knit it back in June of 2019. You can see that I have not woven in any of the ends. And although it's stinking adorable and I absolutely love the color choices um, and the look of it, it is just entirely too cropped for me. Let me show you. Now, I know some people enjoy a cropped sweater. Um, I do. This is too cropped. I don't know if I am maybe longer waisted than these types of sweaters are intended for, or if the idea is that you should just sort of be wearing them with um, a skirt or something. Maybe it's just because I am a millennial and we don't seem to get the cropped situation that's going on with all the Gen Zers these days. Um, it's too cropped for me. You know, I think that hitting just above my hip here is the right cropped length for me. So I've got maybe three to four inches that I would like to add to the body of this sweater. Um, it also is sort of funky through the top a little. And I think that's because I probably knit it one size too big and I'm not sure what I can do to solve that problem. What I will do is lengthen the body, give it a good block. It hasn't been blocked yet and that might sort of even out some things up here. Thing is, is that like positive ease is great through the body. It's not great on your chest. You know what I mean? So I feel like I should have maybe knit one size down and then I would have a little bit of negative ease up here that would pull things to sit flat. Um, and then you can always pick up more stitches under the underarm than the pattern calls for to give a little bit more room through the body. So like I said, I'm going to lengthen the torso of this sweater and then after I give it a good block, if it's still doing this thing up here that I don't love, I will stick it into a little t-shirt cardigan situation. So. Let's embark on that journey, shall we? All right, so in order to add length to the body, I'm going to need to rip out the hem and this little bit of the blue and gray color work. Luckily, I knew basically from the moment I cast this sweater off that I probably was going to want to do this. Just haven't got around to it yet. Um, so I did keep the original yarns that I used for this project. So I've got this one here. Um, it's difficult to tell on the background, but the lice is actually a stitch of the neon and a stitch of the hydrogen. Um, I've got extra neon, although I won't need, I will need some of it, right, for the lice. Um, if I do decide to open it up and make it into like a little cardigan or maybe pop sleeves on, I've got plenty of this, um, the blue color, I think it's the beryllium. And this is my limiting factor. I have just this left. It's about 28 grams of the argon. Um, I would have had 150 grams to begin with though. So I think this 28 grams might be enough to give me a couple inches down at the bottom. And I don't have any more because you can see there was a big dye lot difference. Um, it's showing up even bigger on camera. This one's showing a lot more blue compared to this guy on camera. Um, you can kind of see in this batch of the argon um, that blue dye split into sort of a red and uh, silvery blue and this was you know different dye lot um, I think a different uh, lot of the actual physical dye and didn't split at all so um, limiting factor is going to be this argon 
I need to rip back um, so that I can continue knitting in pattern. Um, it would be helpful if I also knew what size needle I had knit this original sweater on. I do not, because I didn't actually make a Ravelry page for it at the time. Um, bad knitter that I am. But um, I chances are pretty good I would have knit with a pattern recommended needle size. That tends to be what I do. So um, in order to pick up, I've got my beginning of round right here. I've got a very long um, sock knitting needle. It's probably like a 2.25 millimeter. And let's zoom in so that you can see nicely what I'm doing here. I'm just going to use my smaller than gauge size needle. Um, sock needles like this are excellent for picking up stitches to come through the leg of each stitch in this one solid round row um, between this blue and gray and between that neon um, stitch in the lice pattern. There is one solid row and I'm just going to over under my way just like that all the way around the sweater. Um, once I've got all those stitches on I will unpick my cast off and uh, start ripping back. All right so I've got all those stitches all the way around picked up onto this needle. Um, it's pretty quick. Uh, it only took me maybe five six minutes. And now I'm going to undo the slip knot um, that I would have put through my the end of my cast off. Oop, very easy, hopefully. Do I have more than just a slip knot? And I should be able to just start unraveling. What's going on here? Mm, I might have tied a little knot. The end. Yeah, there we go. Now it's just a matter of unraveling um, because this has been sitting for a bit. There might be some spots where it kind of sticks and you gotta give it a little tug to get it going. It's just because of the fuzzy yarn. Um, the little bits of fuzz tend to interact with each other that you can just pop them apart. I don't think it's like a very fuzzy yarn, but it is a 100% merino yarn and so it's going to always have a little bit of fibers poking out like that. Once I get out of the cast off edge, that problem usually resolves itself. And all of this is super easy to do because I never actually wove in my ends. See, it's just being smart, not lazy. Alrighty. And let's unravel. Color work should unravel one color at a time as long as you weren't twisting your yarns together. So you can see that the blue stitches are unraveling and the gray stitches are still hanging out. But I must have twisted my yarns there. Which means I gotta come to my gray and start unraveling. Alright, apart from dropping two stitches here at the end, there we go. I am all unraveled. I've got my stitches on needles. I can knit directly off of this small needle onto a larger needle and start adding length. Um, the only thing is I did notice in my Instagram post regarding this sweater that when I knit the body originally, I was alternating two skeins of this color um, to avoid any pooling 
and I just have this ball, it's all I could find left. So we're gonna not alternate anymore and just go with uh, with just this one. And we'll continue on in that lice pattern for as long as this yarn lasts. Several days later. All right, so here we are back with my sweater and I'm kind of in an odd spot where I've got all sorts of things going on at the bottom. Um, but I wanted to show you what I've done. Uh, I didn't stop to take footage um, as I went along because I kind of had a cold and some laryngitis for the past week. But basically, last you saw it, I had ripped back. I put this stitch marker in so I knew where I had ripped back to. And I used up everything I had left of that gray yarn to knit a couple more rounds of the um, kind of double lice color work pattern until I ran um, just about out of that gray. I was weighing my yarn as I went, so I knew it was taking me about two grams to do a round. Um, so when I had just under four grams left, I switched over to um, some pattern work. Now, the original sweater pattern calls for um, two stitches of blue, two stitches of gray for about four rounds, and then a solid blue hem. I decided instead to extend the length a bit, and because I didn't like the way the original hem was sitting, to mimic some of this stripey color work from the top. So I knit a blue, a gray, a blue, a gray, and a blue. That used up the last of my gray, and then I switched to the lighter, um, that's my hydrogen, I believe, color here. So this lighter color in here, and did the one by one color work and then repeated that stripe pattern. And then I thought I would give this a try with a folded hem. So I purled a row and then knit um, some of the neon and the beryllium, the blue stripes. And now I am using a three needle bind off to um, finish off my hem here. So what's that? what that is entailing is using a thin sock knitting needle here to pick up the back of this row here. Um, so I'm just scooping through these pearl bumps and grabbing every single one onto this needle. And I just sort of load up 20 or so and then I cast them off and then I load up 20 more. Uh, that way you don't kind of have too many, too many stitches and too much tension going on. And then I can slide this through so that these stitches are available. Get this needle ready, pop my working stitch back onto it, and then it's just a three needle bind off. So through the front stitch, through the back stitch, knit through those two stitches, sorry, and then slide them off the needle and bind it off. And I'm just trying to keep my tension loose because I don't want to um, bind off too tightly and have that pull in or anything. So knit through both, pull them off, and bind off a stitch. Front stitch, back th stitch, knit through them both. So I'm just working that around here. And that is seaming uh, the two sides of my sort of folded over hem here. Um, it is creating a little bit of a divot on the right side of the fabric, just where that gray stitch is being pulled a little bit more taut than the row above and below. But that should even out a bit when I block it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to finish casting my hem off, and then I will block my sweater and try it on again for you guys. Okay, so I just cast off my, um... My folded hem and I threw my t-shirt on, my soldatna crop on right away. And before blocking, it's hanging a little bit more belled than I might like. The length has come down to a better place. Um, you can kind of see, I think I added about four inches in length total compared to it before. And I'm gonna give it a block and see where we're at. So that's where we are now. Many hours later, Alright, so it's blocked. I did go ahead and weave in my ends and here she is in her full glory. Um, you can see that it still doesn't fit the best through sort of the upper chest, upper bust area. 
Um, I think again, I might have preferred this knit one size down or potentially the problem may also be that um, there's too many stitches um, for the front and back. And if I had shifted an extra 10 or so stitches from each side over onto the sleeves, um, that would maybe sort of pull this out this way a little bit more. I'm not sure. I think this is a common uh, issue sometimes with yoke construction, that it doesn't sit great sort of in the armpits. But I mean, blocking did definitely help sort of the ballooning that it was doing in the front. And you know, when you set it on you, it does sit not bad. Um, the folded hem, that sort of divot mostly evened out and it's hanging pretty great. It does still sort of bell out a little bit. Uh, quite honestly, I probably would have been okay with the 2x2 two two ribbing hem had I re-knit it on a needle size smaller so that it would tend to want to pull in and then you would block it to hang straight. But I don't hate sort of the way that this folded hem turned out and I'm certainly not going to change it. I'll try and um, get a couple pictures full length outside. Uh, I've been wearing it a couple times since it came out of blocking and drying uh, with this uh, dress and I think that this length down too with um, like a tank underneath and jeans would work good. So overall I have definitely taken this sweater from something that I was never going to wear into something um, that is much more wearable. So differently in the future it's definitely too big. So the pattern says that this is meant to have uh, one to four inches of positive ease and I've definitely got closer to like 10. So size down next time. I believe I was on gauge. Um, I won't go back and measure it now. I think that um, it's just that like the positive ease isn't as bad. No, it's still even way too much up here at the bust. So definitely I'll size down if I knit this a second time. Um, I would knit the body length this length though, like that adding the extra sort of six repeats of this pattern made a huge difference in my preference on how to wear it. So size down, knit it longer, and then I would probably go back to the original 2x2 two two hem. I think the pattern didn't call for you to switch to a smaller needle size, and so I would definitely... Oh no, it did. I don't know if I did. So I would definitely make sure I drop a needle size for my 2x2 two two hem so it pulls in and then can sit nice and straight, but really it is a little bit too big and you wouldn't think it to look at it, but one size down would be the right choice in the future. So overall, happy enough with the sweater. Don't know that I'll actually knit it again because I don't tend to knit sweaters more than once, but I do plan to knit a similar pattern by Caitlin Hunter. Um, and that is the one named after chicken. Sorry, I'm just looking on Ravelry here. Uh, the Jupiter crop. I don't know if it's named after chickens. She's got holding a chicken in the pattern photo. So I do plan on knitting the Jupiter crop, which I think is a very similar situation to this sweater, um, but with less positive ease. So that'll probably be my next sort of Caitlin Hunter pattern, um, rather than knitting the Soldatna again. But my next sweater rescue, I'll give you a sneak peek before I go is going to be this one right here. And we're gonna play with felting. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and maybe found some helpful things in it. If you did, it would be um, really helpful and mean a lot to me if you made sure you were subscribed to my channel. Um, click like on this video, leave me a comment of what you're interested in seeing out of the yarn lab in the future. And uh, that's all I've got for you for now. Happy knitting. Come on. Come on.